just finish it and it doesn't matter if it's already like a little retro from the sound or so just spread it to the spread it with the people and, and they love it because it's such a wonderful melody in in my opinion yeah i uh, know absolutely man what kind of besides your own music what kind of music do you listen to nowadays at home when you are not working a lot of gospel music i gospel. love kimberell Kimberell, you know her. I, she's a gospel singer. I I like soul music. Sometimes I don't listen to music at all because I need some. It, my head is too busy sometimes with this type of songs. I have to learn with other bands. Not at the moment, but normally. Or if I have to record something for someone and you repeat choruses over and over and they stay stay in your head the whole time. So I don't listen to any music. But if I do, I like this kind of gospel music or some soul music um, and uh, uh, like I um, I have a I like Jamie Foxx by the way he's amazing this guy can sing yeah, and yeah. he's such a he has such a talent with his humor and everything I had no clue that he sings that well oh he does yeah you know oh Jesus Christ he's really cool yeah and uh, Kim Burrell she's a gospel singer um, she's a preacher actually she has a range that is mind blowing, and uh, her. I like Brandy or this. Uh, I like I don't know a lot of Erica Badu. I I my music is influenced by her former former productions. Maybe this is not your type of music. I don't I, know. I know Erica. Come on, I have like three CDs from her. Oh, she really? has an amazing Erica has an amazing voice. Yeah, the, her personality is a little crazy to me. Yeah, <laughs> but if I take the personality out, the music is very good. She has an yeah. She had a, she did a performance at the Soul Train Awards. The Soul Train, yeah, which was so cool. I and mean, she's really an, a, a performer, uh, but outstanding and very special <laughs> in every way, you know. But uh, this type of drums and this type of you know voicings, I like a lot in my music. And um, a, a really huge, a, a big talent to me is um, Anderson Pack. You know him? He's oh. really cool. He's this is a young guy. He um, he played at the Grammy, I think the, the pre-show or something. He is a drummer that also sings, or a singer that also plays drums. Yeah. He, the Tiny Desk concerts, you has you could see a lot of his music. Um, I, he had a show there, and it's amazing. This guy can play. What a drama, what a, what a cool concert. And he plays and he sings all these lead vocals by a full setup. He plays drums the whole time, but not like just, you know, a little bit he, with all those fills and these crazy stops in between. And like, oh. Yeah, he's very good. Yeah, Tiny Desk is a program on NPR with a radio here in Washington, D.C., like 15 oh. minutes. And oh, I'm really? going to, in a couple of weeks, I'm going to be interviewing the guy who put that together. The okay. main NPR, the, the tiny desk guy. So, they're, yeah, they're very good. And uh, yeah. they invite a lot of different people and they do, you know, four song. And it's yeah, yeah. I think it's a, a great idea. It's like you have a musician that you, you feel like you can reach them because there's no stage, no light. That's right, It's yeah. just like playing music or playing artists. And this is what I like. This is the contrary to a, a CD. CD sometimes is perfection. Or if you really want to enjoy every little thing, you can listen to it over and over. But if you're on stage, it doesn't matter if it's perfect or not. Everybody tries its best all the time, you know. But uh, but it's like this real life, you know. You have uh, you, you you have the impression that you get to know this person there, or at least for the I period do. of time, you know. Do you uh, looking back in your life? You have played with so many people, but is any Two questions. So, any musician that you wish to have the opportunity to play that you can never play, and the other question is, looking back, any any anyone that you would like to play with him or her again? Mm -hmm. um, we would have had the show uh, last year with uh, Shaka Khan. Yeah. Wow. He got sick two days before we already had all these rehearsals. And we had, uh, we had, uh, it was at the Stadthalle. Yes, yeah, so we had to have another artist uh, and learn the program overnight because mm -hmm. she canceled in the last minute, but we had a huge orchestra and a huge chorus and a 
amazing setup, great musicians, and we would have all been thrilled to play with her because she's a, she's a legend, yeah. And um, to play with, I'm open. I mean, uh, it would be interesting for, for really um, well-known projects to, to perform with, you know. It doesn't matter, I just like, you know, I, I miss being on stage all over the world, you know. We're just now here in Austria around that place. It's nice, it's, it's amazing. I love the people and the energy, but uh, I miss touring, you know. So if there are any artists out okay. <laughs> in America or, you know, in Latin America, I'd be there. <laughs> no one in particular, but um, yeah. I mean, in the direction soul music or, you know, backing up for someone. Yeah. Being a background vocalist or do a duet with someone would be fun, yeah. You don't get tired. You don't get tired yeah. of playing, uh, playing one night, go to the hotel, catch a fly in the morning, and go to another city and another hotel. And uh, you don't get tired of doing that kind of stuff when you tour. Oh yeah, I mean, uh, we we had a lot of uh, tours with Tender Dream. Sometimes I think we had fourteen concerts in fifteen days in fourteen different cities. Yeah, wow. So there's no fun after the show. You can do anything, make party or drink or do something. I'm not like that. I, my performance is always very exhausting. This show, you know, like playing drums in a very eccentric way. You go and then sleep as long as you can or as good as you can, eat as good as you can and then do the show. But if you come back after a tour like this, it's like being in a different world. It's very, very strange. You know, like... Everything that is real feels like it's unreal because yes. actually being on tour is unreal, you know. You, sometimes mm -hmm. you don't even remember, have you been, have we been in Philadelphia three days ago or was it, I don't know, Chicago? Where have we been? We didn't, some, we had days but we don't even remember where we performed because you drive there to the entrance, go there on stage, build the things and then leave and then you're like, okay. I think this was this door <laughs> or this place and then it's I think for a period of time it's nice but I prefer going to a place staying there for some days doing two three shows and then go to the next if you have a show every day it's, it's exhausting yeah yeah it, are there a lot of musical venues in Vienna that you did you that you, you have played to that you like them I mean yeah I think I think pretty m most of them over these years with different bands and different projects. Yeah, this is, yeah. But we'll see what happens after the pandemic. I'm quite sure you have been in, in, in Berlin too many times. Berlin is the, the capital of electronic music. So every electronic music, I have no idea why, but I have interviewed several people alone. All of them came from the Berlin music world and, Either they live in Germany or they are moving to, uh, sorry, they live in Berlin or they're moving to Berlin. They're, they're so, every every person walking down the street in Berlin knows electronic music, you know. But, but it's a huge scene of electronic music in Vienna too. I don't know That's if you true. know that. Yeah. No, 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 I didn't know uh, that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There are a lot of, uh, there's a lot of things, uh, not now, but normally a lot of uh, electronic music going on. You have to check this out. They're uh, great artists, you know. You will, they, you will need to when I, later on when you when I send you an email, you send me some names. Yeah, I, I will. I will. You can look uh, up the home pages. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they. Um, I mean, for me, Tanger and Ray Moyle, but uh, Peter Bauman, Klaus Schulze, uh, Manuel Goshin. There are so many. There, there. Yeah. Electronic music. It takes you to another place when you yeah. listen to your headphone. And you're drinking a beer or wine, whatever it, it takes you places. Some it's unbelievable. It's, uh, it's hard to describe. It's very uh, uh, yeah. You know because I think if it's in instrumental music, your mind starts creating your own uh, story. You know, then sure, depending on your mood, mood, depending yeah. on your mood, you travel in your mind. You know, it's like you don't need to have a certain person in front of it, limitizing you because you you just see this person. But in this way. It's like flying and uh, and dreaming and, and you know if you let it go and if you don't uh, stop this flow then you it's like flying to somewhere you know where you couldn't even imagine being yeah and um, 
I don't know if you know that we should have uh, had uh, worked or probably performed live with Shomi Shah, yeah, which does electronic yeah. music too. It would have been very interesting. It didn't happen, uh, but uh, we got to know him. Uh, he was in the studio with Edgar and they did the song and so. But um, I think he he's, people did know him more as uh, a name and uh, Tantra Dream was much more known in America. Yeah. Yeah. Really? So maybe that's why, the, yeah. Yeah, maybe that's why I I haven't heard from this band before I first was there at this audition. Yeah? Because uh, if you're in the Latin music, it's a totally different direction, yeah. And then later on, I noticed okay, and everywhere we went, for example, if we've been to America, then uh, you have heard out, oh, and everybody knew the names even more than like, in, of course, in Europe too, but not so much, you know. So they focused on this American market before I was there yeah yeah and yeah, you, yeah. you you could tell where we have been you know that they know it so well yeah and um yeah so you like to travel in your mind when you listen to oh, absolutely uh, and I, I always wonder if Edgar Frosty or Jerome Frosty any of the kids they have kids are into because they were the parents you know Edgar and they was so famous right uh, I wonder if the kids or grandkids, you know, are are into electronic music because it's it's easier when you have the last name for somebody and you're good in what you do, it to it help you out, open doors, you know. Yeah. But Jerome, he does his own thing with electronic music, his son. Yeah. I, I'm sure you know his work. Yeah, of course, son. Jerome. Yeah, I I know with his son, I didn't know that. No, I didn't. I think I think mm -hmm. you guys he has his own. I need to check it out. Yeah, uh, we have we have had a tour in Spain, Edgar, uh, Sharom, and me. The yeah. just the three of us. Or um, uh, we had been playing in, in Madrid and in Barcelona and in Granada. I remember that we've been on tour with but it's three concerts. It was just the three of us, and then at that time his son was was still in the band. Yeah. Wow. What yeah. What about playing doing a, a duo with with Linda? In, in 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 some of the venues yeah. in, in in Vienna. No, I have, I have a Latin, I huh? have a Latin formation. I do have Kamakut Orchestra. I don't know if you know that. And she's playing in my band from really? time to time. We don't you know because it's a huge band of twelve people, and she, God, she does yeah. sometimes plays in the band. But yeah, it's a good idea. I mean, we are very good friends, and we 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 see each other private, and uh, yeah. I could tell her that we should probably do a duet. <laughs> I, I, I will, when I <laughs> when I interview her, I will tell her that I, I say that they should do, should do it together. What about what about what are the plans for the future? It, are you working a new a new new work EP, new CDs? What are you what are you currently doing right now? I'm uh, currently uh, finishing a song. It's called "Love Is on the Way," and it's a uh, um, a song that. Uh, tries to um, bring good vibes to the people in the times of pandemic, you know, like good yeah. things are coming up and then it's going to be okay again in a different way, but everything's going to be better. And um, my drama, Shayan Fatih, he's in, he lives in Madrid and they yeah. are now currently finishing the, the, the music. It. Yeah, the, yeah. Mu the music. And then I just have to uh, finalize it and we will publish it within, I think, in a month or so. Uh, it's a really cool song, and um, then uh, we have to see what's what's what people say when we are starting to al be allowed to be on stage again, which could last forever. <laughs> I don't know. And then trying to make some festival things here, yeah, because this is the only chance to perform if we are if it's outdoor at yeah. the moment. Yeah. At the moment, yeah. When yeah. when do you know when they will open up? In no, not yet. So, um, some people say by summer. Some people say by autumn. Some some don't even believe that this will happen this this year. But I hope that it will start. Uh, you know, at least that we have some uh, festivals by summer. So it's it's been too long now. We all miss being on stage. It feels like we don't even remember we we have a stage. <laughs> it's such a weird feeling, you know. But playing playing outside. 
in an open venue, I think uh, it would be faster, right? Playing in a closed venue yeah. would be faster. This is the this is the only chance we have. If it's outdoor, it's less uh, dangerous, or people yeah. get their injections or so. Then um, we slowly come. I don't know. Are people allowed to play at your place already? Uh, yeah. So uh, here, a lot of people are. I got I got the vaccine already, and little by little, venues are open up. So there's some venues yeah. that are, are open, and and then by June. Many of the outdoors venues, they will allow uh, for people to visit. So I'm going to be going and see certain shows. Yeah. But now the 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 stadiums where they are closed or the small theater there, they will open up in September, October. So little by little. Okay, I see. Yeah. Little by little. Yeah, uh, it's at our place, but it takes time. Um, yeah. I we're we'll keeping on producing things, and I you know start to make new projects, uh, or you know at least to bring bring new songs to the band, and then we have band rehearsals. But still, this is difficult at the moment because the the numbers are still high. Yeah, so it's always difficult. You have to have a test, and then be in a rehearsal room, and it has to be big enough, and all these kind of things. So it makes it difficult for us to work normally or be creative or you know work on new songs so we're always sending music by email and then recording at home or at different studios and then send it back to finish it which is a yeah it it can work also but it's not the the, the and homogenic process you know yeah of course so. yeah and and then some countries in europe it will take longer like london it yeah. will take longer now i was i bought ticket to fly to see genesis and then yeah. this postponing. I was planning on on May to go and see Eric Clapton and the Royal Albert wow. Hall. And it has been count the Royal Albert Hall. Huh? The Royal Albert Hall? Yeah. Oh, and, cool. uh, and then they will they sent me an email a couple of days ago, they moved for another year. So yeah. uh, the Eric Clapton, I like his music and uh, going to the Royal Albert Hall, which is as Eric know, Clapton, that... by the way, but Eric Clapton, by the way, is one of the musicians we have always played at home to, you know, yeah. See, Eric Clapton and Billy Joel and this type of music oh, we, that kind of we stuff, had yeah. the news from also, yeah. Yeah, yeah. you and, and actually you guys play with that, uh, I don't know if I pronounce it correctly, the Zeitgeist concert. There yeah. was... That was at, at the Royal Albert Hall, right? Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. True, true, true. Yeah, that was a famous. Like, I, I have the CD, like three albums, and it's it's very good yeah, stuff. So this was such a cool venue because uh, you know you can feel the legends that have been oh, there. Every everybody, and, and, famous and people have played there. And the interesting thing is, I thought it was just for concerts, and then I went around, and then there are these pe people from the Queen and everything. And all of a sudden, there was a picture of Muhammad Ali one of the biggest boxers in the world yeah. and I don't you know my father used to be a boxer when he was young and so we always saw these box shows and we saw the original fights from Mali and I was there and I was like oh, really he was there too it, it felt like you know uh, so amazing that that uh, also different events like like sports events have taken place at this place so it's yeah. a legend and it's amazing well you, you, you are a legend Iris <laughs> you are a famous. Okay. So, so tell me about the, the 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 vintage furniture and your clothing line. Feel free to elaborate on that. Oh yeah, okay. Um, yeah, as, as I don't have anything to do on stages, and I thought my, my I make my own stage at home, <laughs> and uh, I came up with the idea to have a vintage facelift with uh, upcycling furniture. You know because. Um, People have a lot of cool stuff and it is thrown away and I thought why not to make a colorful extra out of it and then I said um, I try it because it's just for fun I try and uh, and the feedback was amazing the people really seem to like it a lot and then they start asking me could you do mine and could you do this and that uh, and at the beginning people were a little um, I don't know they were um, surprised. And then I wrote a, a, a little post and I said, people always ask me, why do you do so many different things? And I said, why not? <laughs> of course, yeah. 
But ¿Por you, qué no? ¿Por qué no? Right. But where where you buy all this furniture? Or people are calling oh, you. I have to, you have to look it up at Wilhaven, or you have to have, ask friends, or people are calling me and saying, hey, we've got something, you want it? And then I have to see it, and I say, well, I can make something out of it. Yeah, and of uh, everything, every piece of itself is a challenge. You cannot imagine. And thank goodness I have an expert that always repairs stuff that is really broken, and the rest I do myself. And uh, I sit in front of a furniture sometimes a week, and I'm asking it, which color do you want to be? What do you want me to do with you? And then I get an answer, and then I and then it goes like this. But I give I give my all my heart into it, and it's it's fun, you know. It's but it's work. It's it's hard. <laughs> And you, so you, do it, you, you do it like a, you do that work at home or somewhere else? Or? Sometimes in the studio uh, because I have space and or I, I have a room in my in my flat um, that I could use for smaller pieces. And uh, as uh, in the pandemic, I couldn't uh, should we shouldn't go out anywhere. I was there. I bought tons of colors and, and everything. And then I said, okay, let's try it. Let's go. And now my whole flat is packed with furniture. <laughs> so I have to bring it somewhere to store it somewhere in between because I have no space anymore. <laughs> for myself. But are you but are you selling it? Are you selling it or no? Yeah, I'm selling it. Yeah, yeah. So I, I have to think about selling it internationally, but you know the transportation is probably difficult. I don't know, but I think would people would love it all over the world. You know? <laughs> yeah, and but in Vienna, in then in hotels. Or yeah. I don't know in museums. Um, private people are musicians. They're writing me. They said, "Oh, I like that piece. Uh, where can I get it? How much is it?" And, and you know, like, do you have others like similar to this? And um, it's slowly becoming more. I would never stop being a musician. And people shouldn't get me wrong that I start to be in a in a furniture business. But I think it's good sometimes to do something different. Oh, yeah. uh, you know, like being creative in a different way makes you more creative in another way. So that's right. Plus, uh, maybe I plus, write a furniture song in the future. <laughs> that's right. Plus, plus the other thing is you you don't have money coming in as a musician because you're not touring. So yeah, you need to true. pay your bills, pay your flat, whatever, and sure. so yeah. you need another sort of income. To, so people need new furniture. Why don't you guys buy some? <laughs> Maybe you will be teaching a Spanish lesson too, you know? Yes. <laughs> I think I, I'm sure you have tons of ideas that what I could do. <laughs> yeah. So how, how many hours do you work a day or what time you wake up? You're busy, man. Oh, I'm early. I'm always early. As soon as the sun is out, I'm up. I'm inspired. I'm, I'm an early bird. But I'm mm -hmm. up to midnight, you know, uh, and I... I I use um, in, uh, impulses, impulse. I like to use this. If I'm not inspired with something, I'm not forcing myself to do it because I know it's not my whole heart in there. So most of the time, if I wake up and I'm inspired and I do this or that, I decide, you know, like this. This is the good thing of being an independent musician that you decide when you want to do what. And if I'm inspired at midnight, I probably work till five o'clock in the morning on a song because I'm inspired, you know? Then you have a break in between and maybe some so days or weeks, nothing's coming up. But if it's there, you just have to record all the ideas, you know, before they're gone. And it's the same with furniture, but you can't do furniture midnight or three o'clock in the morning. Hello, neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you drink a lot of coffee? No, not at all. If I would drink coffee, I would be even even quicker. You won't. You don't want that. <laughs> you no coffee. Well, what no about coffee, no. <laughs> what about wine or beer? Very seldom. I like being you know fresh in my mind. I like that. Um, you know, just being conscious of what I'm doing. But you know, if I have my birthday, I celebrate my birthday. Maybe drink a little mojito. You know, this kind of thing, sweet and. You know, but I very seldom, like, I, I think I've never really gotten drunk. So I'm, never. Not type, I'm not that type, very seldom. So I I always remember everything I did. This is the good thing. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes you don't want to remember. <laughs> yes, I'm not, but the worst you is know. if you don't remember and the rest remembers. This is worse. Oh, that's not very worse, yeah. you know. <laughs> so where, where, where people can buy your music? In, um, um, I th either you can buy it from my home page or at live concerts or you can download it and uh, at Apple stores or Deezer or 
as you know, Spotify is streaming. I would love people buying my CDs, the whole CD with the cover artwork, because it's a lot of work, yeah. And uh, it's nice, it's like you, I see so many uh, vinyls in your bag. It's yeah, different yeah. to have something in your hands, yeah. Oh, I have yeah. to send you some music, yeah? yeah. I will sign the CDs and send them to you, so you yeah, have- Yeah, I, I you know, have them. about CDs, about 6,000. Well. Vinyl, about 3,000, uh, 1,000 Blu-ray. In this home, I have four floor, and this is, Porsche, this is stuff that I signed by different people. By wow. Bono, by Phil Collins, by Peter Gabriel. Oh, wow. uh, the the style of search from Genesis. And Tangerine yes. Dream, I have a, a list, at least 50 CDs. Wow. Because Tangerine Dream yeah. have, have done so much stuff. I mean, how Tanya yeah. Rick has at least 60 soundtrack, at least, you know, 40 stuff or 50. They did way before you joined the band. And then, yeah, yeah. And then now with, 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 ja the Jap with Yoshiko and their, and then Torsten, they have another 20 or 30. So they're, Tanya and Rick have like two, I don't know, like 200, at least 200 CDs. And they own about yeah, 60. Yeah. There's, there's somewhere. Uh, Edgar was very productive. Huh? <laughs> I said yeah. Edgar was very productive and he was very, very uh, inspired and creative. And I loved his artwork. I think he was a fabulous graphic uh, art artist, like the covers he did. I know, I, I'm sure you know that he did this all himself. No, I didn't know that. He was such a brilliant um, graphic artist. He used all these really cool collages this 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 really to me it's art this is not just an a cd cover the things that he did was really art he had uh, that um passion to do with work with layers and photoshop and do all these things sometimes we said because i'm a i'm a photographer too so we looked how how are you working with this with this program how you putting things together and make collages of, 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 of things and he explained it the way he worked with layers and pictures and you know blending these kind of things as so like he had an amazing talent of, of, of for, for graphic artwork yeah yeah they're very good and then in the electronic music radio that I, I will send you the link I've been playing a lot of stuff from uh, from Tangerine Dream and a lot of musicians send me so on a weekly basis I get at least a hundred CDs that I need to make time to listen to. Mm -hmm. From people, from, listen, like this I need to listen to. Oh, wow. <laughs> this I need to listen to, they're open. And then this is more stuff. Wow. I'm going to, in a couple of weeks, I'm going to be interviewing uh, Peter Michael Hamill. Oh. Yeah, and uh, as well, and, uh, I need, man, I need to make and, and CDs, vinyl, that way, everywhere, so it's a When are you listening to all that stuff? Uh, at, well, I I try to do like two or three a day, a night when I'm working. Yeah. Uh, later on, I need to go to the office a little bit, but they will come back. And then tonight, I, I need, I want to stay late working some stuff. I will listen to, I don't know, like three or four albums tonight. Wow. And, uh, and I recently bought a big collection for somebody in, in Tokyo, in Japan. Okay. Uh, so I got like, like a thousand vinyl. So I need to, <laughs> I need to give, I, I need to give them away because I will never be able to listen to much. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine. So I can when, I, imagine. When, when I, when I go to Vienna to visit you, I will take, I will send you some. Yes. <laughs> because I have so much stuff, man. But it's just good to talk to someone that loves music so much. What an honor for us that she was so open uh, to listen to different kind of things. You know, it's like people like you are why we are having a reason to be on stage because that's they appreciate the work. You know how much work it is or how, uh, how much absolutely work it is. right. Yeah, you know, it's, it's not. Uh, normal that people are like that it's very seldom but the ones that are like you are such a huge honor for us yeah. too because plus you wanna to... you wanna buy the music i mean i buy a lot of music the musician yeah. need to get paid you know yeah. Um, yeah. 
you know, some people can put a, a CD and everybody that loaded the musician doesn't make any money. No, I don't do stuff. I want to, you know, I go to, I spend a lot of money in shows, go to concert, right? I, I see close to 30, 35 shows a year. Wow. Uh, and I buy a lot of CDs and vinyl and exclusive collections and, uh, and uh, so you need to help the musician. The musician get paid. They don't get paid. They used to get the musicians used to get paid in the past where selling CDs and they make like two dollars a CD or three for vinyl or a T-shirt. But now they don't make any money like that. They 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 only make it when you tour when you do a you know. Yeah. A, Actually, you, know, you, you sell your CDs on tour if you do a live concert. Yeah, the problem yeah. with streaming is it's great that you have your music in a second. If you like an artist, you can download everything in a second. But actually, if you stream it, we really don't get anything out of it unless you have tons of fans. But who in a specific field like the one we are in do have tons of fans, you know? So it's a difference if you have, if, you, if they download, uh, if they stream it and they pay nothing for it, or if they buy a CD and then have, uh, as I told you before, that, that, uh, that artwork and the whole CD in your hands. A lot of people say they don't have any CD players anymore. No, I do. But I mean, yeah, sure. I mean, I know a lot of people that do, but isn't that beautiful to have something in your hands? Mm -hmm. Hold a CD in your hand, no matter if you can play it on a CD player or in your car mm -hmm. or in your, I don't know, wherever. It's just uh, um, something to remember, you know. Oh, no, of course. Let me let me see if I have that. And uh, curiosity, I think I have that album. Give me one minute. I want to see where I have my uh -huh. my tenure. <clears throat> I don't know tenure and David here or upstairs, but um, no, I think I have. I think I have the Tangerine Dream upstairs. But I have... Yeah, no, I think it's... I think it's upstairs. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah, no, no worries. But, um, yeah, but opening this, the stuff, it's, it's, it's very, very cool. Um, it, you know, opening the stuff, opening the vinyl, and, that way you you're forced to sit in front of the turntable and listen to the stuff you know yeah. or the cd yeah. when you when you you know open it up like this for example the from peter Mackie hamill i will listen to stuff tonight you open it up, you need to put in and listen and drink a beer or do something it's good with, yeah. because with the streaming if you don't like 10 seconds you advance it you advance it that's crazy that's living life like that is crazy it's a different feeling also because if you do like this, you drink your beer, you take your time to enjoy and you take your time to really listen to it. I mean, you cannot imagine how many details are sometimes in a composition. You have to oh, listen yeah, to it yeah. over and over to hear all the things that are on there because first you just get the idea from a song, but then later on you hear a little thing and hear it. And, and, and this is, you need to have the focus on it too, you know so i think it's beautiful yeah. if you really take your time sit down relax and enjoy you know yeah. and sure sometimes we like things more and sometimes we don't but it doesn't matter the, the more open you are for a different type of music the more you understand it's like you learn a lot about music you know absolutely absolutely well yeah. uh, thank you very much um Iris, uh, feel free to say something in Spanish if you want. Or... Yeah. Uh, me gustaría decirte muchísimas gracias por invitarme. Fue mucho placer para mí para conversar un poco contigo y que, me, que te gusta mi música y, y las cosas que yo hago. Y gracias para eso. Y mucha suerte para tu canal y que, que la gente lo goza, <ríe> lo disfruta. Claro. Y que nos tenemos la posibilidad de, de, de conectarnos más y para claro. saber Get away, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. So, give me, thank you very much. Give me posting your new music. Uh, this afternoon, I will send you the link to the interview. And then, uh, yeah, definitely, I want to get your music. And then, uh, yeah, if you can put me in touch with the other people, with Linda and other people, that would be You're great. Right, and then, let me, let me know what can I, what can I do to help your music. I, I will going to be doing a, a, a two hours special in your music in a couple of weeks from now. Thank you very much. In the electronic music channel, and uh, 
when I'm going to be playing your stuff, start with Daniel Dream and stuff, the new stuff. So my goal is to, you know, I don't, all my radios are free. I don't charge anything. They are 24 hours a day. I would never have advertising. <clears throat> yeah, I, there's nothing, no social media, just 24 hours basic great music for people all over the world. So wow. I don't charge anything to If anything. I can do something for you too, and if I, if I can uh, publish your um, can, channel somehow. Yeah, yeah. Send I will send you, I will send I you any, yeah, I will send you, right. Yeah, and also, is there something about you, what you're doing, why you're doing it and so? Do you, did you have yeah. a little YouTube video yeah. or did you say something about that? Did you? I will, I can put something together. For me... Yeah, I mean, it would be fun to, yeah, to feature me, you on my side so that like, we had a conversation and it's yeah. why you love music so much and why and which kind of music you love. Yeah. Uh, and uh, support that pe or maybe people are interested in seeing all these interviews you're doing. Yeah, I have everything everything listed on the website. I will send you I will send you a link uh -huh. for everything where all the interviews are. And I do it because I want to promote music. I mean, it's I don't charge anything, you know. Thank you very much. Talking to you, talking to I interview people from Genesis. Uh, wow. you know, I'm going I have interviewed people from Toto, a lot of different drummers. Uh, now they're talking about drummer, the drummer Paul Wertigo from Pan Metheny. I interviewed the former drummer from Toto Simon Phillips. Um, the drummer from the Pan Metheny group and so on and so forth. A lot of, and, and all of guitarists. So, and a lot of people have contacted me, so it's, it's growing. And of Ooh. course, there, there are some people that I will never be able to get a hold of because unless, you, unless you're coming from the BBC, that's different. But, I want to interview everybody, you know, especially all the all the kind of all the musicians in Germany were in the 70s. They were yeah. playing good electronic music. I have interviewed all of them because they're I want to capture this before they die, you know. Sure. You sure. Know? Yes. So I will connect coming. you to Linda. I will I will make a connection to Linda so you can talk yeah. to her too. Yeah. That would be great. And you you guys need to do a duo or a trio. Yes, we are going to do a duo. <laughs> I tell her. We do it specially for you. <laughs> yeah. And then you let me know. So I, I, I hopefully, yeah. hopefully Europe will open up. I need to, I want to go, I want to go to, um, I want to go to Berlin. I never, I, you know, because the, my family came from Munich. I've been several times, but I need to go to Berlin. I buy, buy a lot of vinyl, a lot of music. I don't know how I want to bring it. Berlin you have to let me know when you're around somehow, you know, just yeah. keep in touch and let me know if you're. Yeah. And, I, and I've been in Vienna, you know, in, in Salzburg. As well, it's beautiful. Your country. It's very expensive, though. Uh, yeah, yeah, true. <laughs> no. But Munich, Munich is more expensive than Vienna, I think. Yeah, we, uh, yeah. I, I think I flew the to Alcatraz, Munich, and then yeah. I, I took a train to to Salzburg and Vienna. It's beautiful. I, I, we we like place, right? huh? yeah. yeah, it's a beautiful place. Very, it's yeah. A beautiful it's, country. It's, it, yeah. Uh, so Munich is more expensive than where you live. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then Vienna, yeah. Yeah, it's just the upper class. They say in Munich, it's a lot of exp I don't, I don't know. Um, every time we were there, that the, it's it, it is expensive. Let's say, it's, yes, it is. <laughs> you, you like Vienna? You like Vienna? Yes, yeah. yes. I'm here for a long time already, so I love it. It's a, a it's a calm place, and it's it's cool and it's cozy. You know, no stress. Yeah. It's like you know, the people are relaxed. This is and friendly well, hopefully yeah. we'll hopefully i will meet you one day if we go to dinner or something or yeah it would be nice it would, it would be fun be. <laughs> well, very nice iris uh, good luck thank to you, you with your much. career and let me know if i can help you with everything thank Appreciate you very you. much and thank you for the interview it was fun talking to you uh, same here as well have you're a beautiful a, working day <laughs> yeah you you're a great musician you're very talented man thank you you know thank percussionist you. singer fashion designer <laughs> you have it all, man. Photographer, too, I forgot. <laughs> thank Good you. Personality. Thank you, appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. And keep doing what you're doing, okay? <laughs> I will. Yeah, I will. I will. I will. Thank you. Appreciate have a good day. Bye-bye. Yeah,